Hello, bonjour, Annie, hola. My name is Garrett Abrams. I am the uh, interim artistic director here at Fringe North this season. I'm very happy to be back here once again on our live Fringe North roundtable, which we're doing every Thursday evening until the festival begins on August 21st. So remember to tune in weekly, join us in the chat, share ideas, and discuss everything Fringe North with us. Each week, we're going to have exciting guests from our incredible community of performers and creators and workers. Uh, we're going to give us an inside look uh, as to um, their lives and uh, what we're all bringing to the festival this season. So this week, we have a really special edition where we're going to be checking in with some of our incredible seasonal team. Um, so I'm super happy to be joined by, uh, well, first off, Caitlin, who is not a seasonal worker, uh, but my co-year-round uh, staff member. And then also we are joined by Mark, Avery, and Emily, who are all uh, seasonal team with us this year at the festival. So I'll let you all go around and uh, say a little hello. Um, Caitlin, if you want to start and then maybe pass it around. Yeah, sure. Um, I don't know if you caught, but I had to change my title name, so I apologize to everyone for the confusion. So last year I was the artistic director slash producer, and this year my role has split into two, um, with Garrett taking on half of my load. So I apologize for stealing your title for a moment, Garrett. I didn't even notice. <laughs> <laughs> but I am the artistic producer for this year, and I'm really excited to see the growth of the company and yeah, to be able to split my role into two and to be here with our seasonal staff today and just what they each bring to the table has been really exciting to see um, so far this season. Yeah. Uh, do you want me to pass to someone or? Sure, yeah, yes. let's see let's it that way. All right, I'll pass to Avery. Avery, do you wanna introduce yourself? Thanks, Caitlin. Uh, my name's Avery. I'm the visual artist and vendor lead. And this is my second year with Fringe North and I'm really excited to be back. And I'll pass it to Emily. Thanks, Avery. Um, yeah, my name is Emily. Uh, I'm the artist's relations person. Um, it's my first year um, with Fringe North, and yeah, it's been a great experience so far, and it's been lovely to work with the team and uh, to get to know our artists. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. I'll pass it over to Mark. Hey, everybody. Yeah, um, this is sort of my first year with Fringe. I did help out a little bit with the um, digital end of stuff um, during the pandemic with, with some video work, but this year I'm um, the tourism sponsorship marketing lead, and I'm tasked with uh, doing a lot of kind of design work and uh, editing of podcasts and that sort of thing, but I'm happy to be a part of the Fringe North this year. Awesome. Thanks so much, everyone, for uh, giving a little introduction. Uh, and then I'd love to go a little bit uh, more in depth, kind of piggybacking on this uh, introduction part of things and uh, ask everyone to share a little bit about your background in the arts and I, I, essentially what uh, led you to uh, join us on the team this season um, or in previous seasons. So I'll, let's start with uh, Emily this time. Yeah, so um, I am an artist myself. Um, I am a painter and uh, I love art, music, uh, performing arts. Um, and I moved, recently moved to the Algoma um, area on St. Joseph Island just kind of uh, recently and uh, was looking for kind of part-time or um, sort of casual work for the summer and um, initially was planning to volunteer for Fringe North but uh, contacted Caitlin and they were still looking for people I thought the deadline had passed like this was in the spring um, and then it just so happened that yeah like it all worked uh, did an interview and uh, um, I have background so initially before living um, it, on St. Joseph Island, I was living in Fort Smith and uh, I worked for the Northern Life Museum and Cultural Center. Um, and I did um, event programming, artist programming, um, that kind of thing. And uh, yeah, so I, I kind of fell in love with community arts there because initially I was just kind of doing it solo. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm really glad to be here um, 
in a different organization, but it's also um, an arts organization and a nonprofit. So I'm kind of familiar with the structure, but um, it's definitely, you know, um, new experience. And uh, yeah, yeah. So that's kind of my background. Um, I'll pass it. Oh, <laughs> sorry, I uh, didn't mean to yeah. cut you off. Um, I was just gonna ask what uh, would have been the mo most like interesting parallels you've seen or differences between working with the previous organization and then here in the Sioux with French North? Um, that's a good question. So um, for one, like I worked in person mostly and it was largely um, pretty regional. So we would uh, kind of pull from a pool of um, local people and they weren't necessarily artists so a lot of the programming I was doing was like for community members um, and um, so it's it's a it's very small like compared to like people think uh, Sault Ste. Marie is small Fort Smith is a town of like 2000 um, but it has a vibrant community kind of like um, Sault Ste. Marie like what I've been learning um, it's just isolated enough that you have to kind of build your own um, community, but that um, that job was, there were only three permanent employees. Um, I was one of them, so it was quite small. Um, I had to kind of do a lot, like, you know, a lot of things. And going into this, um, this job, there are many staff members, like all the seasonal employee have so much to bring to the table. Um, so it's been kind of neat learning from other people and seeing like their backgrounds and kind of all come come into play and uh yeah yeah it's just it, it's it's a bigger I guess it's a bigger organization so that's a yeah a bit of a learning curve but it's it's great all right thanks for sharing that that's very interesting uh and you can pass it to whoever you were gonna pass it to previously sorry for cutting yeah. me off no no all good um I'll yeah I'll pass it to Avery Thanks, Emily. Um, so my background is primarily in theater. I grew up doing theater in the Sioux. And then I kind of, I guess, got my start as a writer and director and uh, with Fringe North in the EARP program in its first year in 2021. Um, and now I'm studying drama at the University of Toronto. So that's fun. Um, and that's kind of what I'm bringing to you team yeah I'll pass it to Mark oh Mark here on um, you're muted there we go. so I'm a graphic designer uh, an innovative approach to graphic design and visual arts uh, I do a lot of work with uh, theater and uh, Arts here in Sault Ste. Marie. I'm on a number of uh, boards and whatnot. We're doing a graphic design and uh, marketing and communication type work and uh, sort of born and raised here in Sault Ste. Marie and just uh, really trying to bring my uh, expertise into art and creativity in different ways that I can. Awesome. And then Caitlin, I know we've chatted about your introduction to uh, arts and fringe, but if you want to give a little recap for those who aren't familiar. Yeah. Um, I, I guess in terms of like my history with, uh, like I grew up doing like backyard talent shows to raise money for like the soup kitchen and stuff with friends and in terms of like theater, uh, my my cousins, every time they were in town, my siblings and I would do little plays with them. And eventually the adults got tired of watching our plays. So they handed us a video camera. And I always say now that post pandemic, like digital theater is an actual thing. Like we were doing digital theater before it was actually a thing. <laughs> um, so that's kind of my, it was more of a hobby on the side than being involved with arts professionally or anything. Um, and then I did my master's of theological studies with a focus on helping nonprofits grow. So, and I also attended some business programming from overseas during the pandemic in Australia. 
Um, and so that's kind of how I came into working with Fringe North because it is a nonprofit. And yeah, at the time I had graduated in 2020 um, in May after the pandemic was in full force. <laughs> Um, and so it was really hard to get jobs. So I ended up going to a program with the Sioux Career Center. So a shout out to them. And they actually found me uh, the placement with Fringe North. Um, and then I've been on various different contracts with Fringe since then. So, yeah. Amazing. Yeah, thank you all for sharing. Um, I guess just to round the, the circle, I mean, I've talked about my background and how I've got to Fringe uh, how I got to this role before, but just as a, a little recap for myself, um, I'm from North Bay originally and grew up doing theater there. I came to the second Fringe North Festival as a, a touring artist and sort of fell in love with the festival and the community from what I could see, even though it was really in its infancy at that point. Um, went to school in Toronto for theater and then ended up hearing about opportunities for some remote positions with Fringe North. And uh, I had been following them since I participated as an artist and I had participated another time as an artist during the pandemic and ended up back as a seasonal team member and have been there. This is my third season now. So super happy to uh, be here as well. And I, I love going around and, and listening to people's kind of like entry point and uh, see the the different uh, places that people are coming from to uh, to get where they are and like how we're really bringing in a, a diverse uh, group of folks with a whole bunch of different kinds of experience. Um, not to jump around too much, uh, but Avery, a question that popped into my head, just because you've been working um, for this is this is not your first season and um how has it felt or have you felt like you've gained any skills uh in your schooling at U of T that you were like bringing to the festival um now that you're you're back and uh doing this role um just curious what uh what you feel you've uh been able to bring from from that institution because I definitely have you know, going going through the process of theater school myself and uh, like seeing what I can actually like bring from the theoretical stuff into the practical festival building. I'm just curious how how that's looked for you. Um, I think I've gotten to bring in some time management skills for sure with like how to manage just doing all of the work and school at the same time at the moment. Um, and I think in terms of the theoretical approach to theater and with working at the festival, I think a lot of um, like what kind of like community we're trying to build in the festival is something that I would have like an eye for. So, yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then for you, Mark, curious how you um how, how cuz i'm not as familiar with like the graphic design side of the arts how do you find that world of things like bridges into the arts that we're highlighting as a festival here yeah it's definitely interesting um but a lot of my uh, background like in theater and stuff um there's always aspects of different uh, design uh, recently I've been doing a lot of uh, community theater and actually taking design um, elements and bringing them into uh, digital formats whether it's uh, animation or uh, you know and then a lot of uh, stuff that we do uh, with fringe uh, like programs and um, we recently just uh, launched a billboard that kind of stuff so it's there's definitely aspects of it, and I think um, you need different types. I've noted there are a lot of different talented people here um, in this group this year, so there's a lot of uh, passing off of you know ideas and that sort of thing and uh, feedback and stuff. So it's, it's definitely one of those things that uh, all organizations need and... Um, 
you know, it's 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 been interesting uh, experience um, with Fringe this year to definitely bring all those elements together. I think for sure, yeah. I, and I appreciate having you on and having you share that side of things. Um, and this will kind of bridge us into the next stuff I want to talk about. But I think a lot of people see the the art that we present on stage um, and have less of an understanding of the level of artistry that goes into actually putting the festival on. There's a whole other side of uh, art, it, it, not only the administration stuff, but there's a level of art making that goes into actually getting this festival up on its feet. So I think it's really cool to be able to highlight uh, some of that stuff. Um, and speaking of getting the festival up on its feet, the other thing that I wanted to really highlight is the amount of work it takes to get a festival like French North up on its feet. And we, we've talked about this before. Uh, people don't see the process. They just see the week of festival. So it's really nice to have all of you on here and uh, give you the opportunity to talk a little bit about all of the uh, components that go into putting on this festival. So I'd love yeah, uh, if you all could to walk us through a sort of a standard like week in your roles and uh, like all of the things that you do to uh, help bring this festival to life. So maybe we can start with Avery. Hey, um, a lot of what I do right now is working on the program to get that out so that everyone knows all about all the artists and other things that are happening at the festival. Um, so that's a lot of using Canva. Um, then I communicate a lot with the visual artists and vendors and to really have those vendors, it looked like putting out a call for vendors and hearing back from people who are interested in our community. Um, so it's, really nice to grow the festival in that way this year with having vendors on site um and the visual artists as well so we'll have five visual artists in the festival who will be presenting their work and displays and also having workshops um so just coordinating those things yeah that's what my job looks like and i'll pass it to mark yeah, so a lot of what my uh, job title um, is, is working um, within tourism sponsorship and marketing in, in those three categories. But um, what I've, a lot of what the work I've been doing is uh, just sort of uh, some editing of podcasts, um, just making sure that those are up on YouTube. And then, uh, uh, as I said earlier, billboard, there's a billboard that uh, went out, so I uh, designed that as well as the in the poster for this year, and um, there's some archiving stuff in there. So just kind of organizing of uh, materials because, like Garrett said earlier, there's a lot that kind of goes into this, and just kind of organizing stuff and trying to find stuff from um, all the years. Like you just got to make sure that that stuff's up to date so that um, it's easy to find over the years. So. That's mostly what I'm doing. Cool. And how about for you, Emily? Yeah. So thank you, Mark, for, for editing those podcasts. Um, <laughs> I've been doing a lot of that this summer, um, which has been fun, but definitely a new experience. So for those viewers, please bear with me. <laughs> um, but I'm sure Mark's editing skills are are uh well they're needed for sure but uh they're, they're greatly appreciated both of um, you are, are killing it don't uh, don't sell either of yourself yeah. short. <laughs> i'm just kidding i'm just kidding um yeah um so i've been like i said earlier on in the season it was a kind of heavy on the podcast i was doing like close to four a week for a little bit um but now it's slowed down um so dealing with artists communication. So all the performing artists and um, like right now I'm kind of trying to get all the tech um, requirements all set in place. Um, so kind of answering questions 
um, to artists and like lots of emails. And um, I've been working with um, one of our ERP um, hires um, and yeah, working together and kind of planning out social media posts and uh, artist takeovers and uh, doing a bit of social media posts myself like Canva. Um, I think my visual arts side, I, I do enjoy a little bit of, you know, I'm not a graphic designer by any means, but um, it's fun to dabble. And well, Canva is not graphic design, <laughs> but it's like, you know, uh, bare bones, I guess. Uh, yeah, I don't know. That's kind of what I what I do: answer emails, podcasts, and uh, and other things. Um, doing some Google Forms and uh, Google Sheets, and putting information into tables. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's uh, what about Caitlin? What Caitlin does a lot of things. Yeah, I think. Uh, also, thank you for for sharing that and. Uh... Emily is in the role that I have been in in previous years. So I, I know all of the stuff that goes into it. And I definitely appreciate all the work you're doing on that because I've, I've been there firsthand. So I'm very aware. Um, yeah, for you, Caitlin, I, I, I think you do a lot of the stuff that scares artists the most about working <laughs> in this side of things. So I'd love for you to take us through that. Yeah, well, no, that's an intimidating way to approach it. But um, yeah, like I do a lot of random things because it's essentially like everything that makes, allows everything else to happen. So meeting with team members every week or every other week to make sure that they all know what they're doing and supporting them in their roles. Um, a lot of paperwork, like there's so much paperwork involved in a festival and especially because Fringe North, we are relatively new or we haven't been established like all that long. Like we're, we are established at this point, but uh, we don't necessarily have all of the paper trails for things in place, like things like vendor agreements, sponsorship agreements, like all of those that we have written from scratch, um, contracts as well on the contract side for employees, like writing all of those pieces. It's a lot of different pieces of paperwork that always take way longer than you expect as well. Um, and then on the marketing side too, like helping with press releases as well for the team members that are involved in that and those kinds of paperwork pieces too. Um, let's see, doing payroll as well. So collecting all of the hours to send things to like our accountant and that kind of work that's just tedious and again, takes more time than you would think. Um, reaching out to like potential sponsors and again, doing like all of like the vent, helping with the vendor agreements actually getting sent out and um, the sponsorship agreements too and how those are shaped um, so lots and lots of paperwork lots of supporting the team um, yeah making sure that we're not like overspending so having that balance between what's coming in from grants and what we are spending it on to know that we're not gonna um, yeah that we're not that we're only spending money that we do have <laughs> um, and trying to to keep track of that and like the budget piece too um, I think like there's a lot of tracking too that I think people don't realize about like because we try and keep track of like how many items we have had printed for like posters where they've been put up uh, where they are what locations have materials where we can still reach out to um, just databases upon databases of like community partners um, potential sponsors um, like the media that we want to reach out to with information too so like lots of different databases um, and everything, like, like I said, it always takes longer than you expect because you like you sit down to do a piece of paperwork or to go through a database and you're like, oh, this will take me like an hour. And then two, three hours later, you're finally done. So it's, uh, yeah, a lot of the more tedious side of, of work. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think of what else I do. I do a lot of like just jumping in where team members need support as well, especially as we get closer to festival um, as well in my role. So that's been a common thread for the past couple of years and yeah and just as like um so that's pretty much I guess what I have to say for my role but just as Emily was talking I was really thinking about like how much time goes into like collecting all of the tech requirements and that kind of thing because I think we can say that and people think like oh yeah that has to be done but like it really does take weeks of gathering that information from all of our artists and then making sure that it hasn't shifted too much by the time we get to festival because sometimes as artists are creating their performances 
uh, they, their vision for it can change slightly. So keeping tabs on all of that is just like endless hours of work that can sound like a quick thing saying it, but it's, uh, and that's just one example, because like the program to, or creating a billboard, like all of these things take a lot more time than people would expect. Um, so yeah, it's uh, a lot goes into the festival. <laughs> yeah, and thank you for sharing. Thank you all for sharing. I, I, from the perspective of as someone who still does fringes as an artist and is on this side of things, like I, it's, I get, I have like an understanding when artists are like, cause often for myself as an artist, I'm still like to the right to the last minute, basically like shifting things and creating, cause that's the process. Right. Um, but then also at the same time, it's like the work on our side and like trying to, work as an organization with like 40 plus artists who are all going through this process of creation is uh an an interesting challenge in the work that we do i think it's pretty unique in doing a festival like this uh just like have like really giving artists space to like create and work and you know let them be in their process but also trying to make things run smoothly it's it's a fine balancing act for sure yeah, definitely a balancing act and like wanting to support artists and help them with that yeah. vision especially like programs like our emerging artists in residency program that actually these are individuals who may never have touched the arts before um, and they may not even realize when they start out they have a timeline for themselves but that's not how the creative process often goes but then also having to like need that information on our end so that we can get the right tech equipment to have on site and like those things and have that balance between being able to support their vision but also having those boundaries for ourselves as staff members that you know we can only do so much and can only support so much and there does have to be those deadlines and yeah so it's a balancing act I think is the best word for it yeah advice for artists who are working with us or really any French festival this is what I often do when I'm filling out my application form because the application forms, as artists know, open way before the festival. And plenty of times I've been filling out an application without having a script done or without like really knowing what show I'm going to end up doing. Um, I think our, our festival, the timeline's a bit tighter. So we don't have a lot of like, you know, TBD about shows and things like that. But uh, like as an artist, I completely understand people not immediately knowing what their tech requirements should be when they're filling out their application. I generally will go and kind of kind of work through in my head about like, what is the maximum amount of tech that I could possibly need for this work? Go for that ask. And then it's a lot easier on our end to like work back from that and go like, oh, I actually don't need this. I mean, I'm not saying like, you know, I need this giant set and a fly system and all this stuff like but like what's reasonable within a fringe setting go for like the most you could possibly need and then if you have to scale back that's way easier than scaling up on on the administrative side that's that's generally the where i found uh or how i found it to be the easiest as an artist and from this end but uh yeah uh i would love to know from everyone what uh what's your favorite part uh of working with the organization like what's your what's the best part of your week or, or a highlight of the season so far and we'll start with mark this time uh i think there's there's quite a few but i think um the the one that kind of sticks out is um kind of the the mascot that we are introducing this year I don't want to tease too much of it um, for people watching, but you definitely kind of watch that. There's a, a unique aspect to it, I guess, this year than uh, previous years and sort of the we're introducing as our uh, tipping the fringe so that the encouraging people to uh, kind of uh, pay beyond uh, ticket sales and that kind of stuff. So uh, that's definitely the one thing that sticks out for me. All right. What about uh, you, Emily? Um, 
I would say the part of getting to talk to artists and have conversations with artists, um, as well as uh, chatting with the team and getting to know the team. Um, I was a little hesitant uh, to the fact that a lot of this is to be done over Zoom, just because I don't have a lot of experience with, with Zoom and just, I just feel like there's, it's kind of like a, I don't know, blocking getting to know people um like really but actually it's it's been great um yeah I guess that just speaks to <laughs> I'm I'm living on St. Joseph Island which is uh there aren't a lot of people here so it's just <laughs> in my situation it's been it's been nice um yeah uh I'll pass it to Avery Emily um I'd say one of the highlights of my week would be like the team meetings and just getting to like touch base and what we're working on and hearing from everyone else and what they're working on. What about for you, Caitlin? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I think I have two main highlights and they're both to do with people, but one, Garrett, you being in the role this year makes things a lot easier. And with my health going through what I've been going through, I don't think it would be possible this year <laughs> without you in the role. So thank you. <laughs> um, and then also, I really do enjoy each season when we bring a team together and being able to, especially because I am the one who meets with everybody one on one, and to see people's strengths and to see the the growth throughout the season and to see people kind of like take charge of being able to see how their talents can be applied to whatever we're doing that season and how they can make it like make it their own because each season our team really does make it. It's the team's festival and it's. I mean, it's the community's festival as a whole, but like how it gets shaped is really based on who our team is um, and how that's brought together. And just if I can touch on it briefly for those watching, uh, because we have a very unique interview process <laughs> and the way that we do interviews is we actually interview for every single position at the same time. So when you apply or for the seasonal positions anyways, it's different for year round contracts, but um for when you apply we actually bring you in for an interview for every single position that's available um, and we consider you for all of them because what we really do think is important with this kind of work is getting a team that matches well together um, and that their strengths can play off of each other and that there aren't as many gaps and weaknesses because we have like a well-rounded team as well um, and that we have like that chemistry between um, who has applied that year so every year is very different and it is like that kind of like family unit and when we have our interviews we talk about it in terms of like it's when you apply to be in a play and you audition to be part of a family like there needs to be that uh, belief that these characters are actually a family so that chemistry has to be there or it's just you could be a great actor but if you don't have that like chemistry with the other actors it's not going to be believable that they're a family together so we really do look for our seasonal staff to be a good fit with each other as well um, and that that does mean that again it's trying to like diversify as well so that we have different strengths and weaknesses so that we don't have like a, a gap in the team as a whole because you could have great applicants that on their own are all great applicants but then you know if everybody is really strong in the same area it's gonna create a gap um, and seeing how people's strengths play off of each other each season and how we co-create the festival is really one of my highlights every year because it is just so different year after year even having a lot of the same team members back because there is just that uh, that growth that happens between seasons too nobody comes back the exact same as they were last season um, and so it really does make this really like you were saying earlier Garrett how on this side it is an art form in and of itself and that art piece that co-creation um, on the production side really does shine through uh, everyone just being who they are and being able to come to the table with their strengths. Amazing. Uh, yeah, I would say for me, I well, first to echo, um, it's been really great working with you, Kayla. I mean, it's great working with the whole team, obviously, but we work together for a longer period of time and for more hours generally. Uh, so it's been really nice doing these two roles. Um, and then just having the ability for myself, this is the first season I've been able to be in the Sioux for the whole summer, uh, which has just been really great to be able to 
meet the team in person before the week of the festival, uh, to be able to work in the office space, um, and to be able to like have the ability to show up at community events. And if uh, someone asks me if I can pop in for something, I can say yes, which is great. I, I really like felt more connected to working within the Sioux this season, which has been fantastic and like really familiarizing myself with the why of what we're doing for the city versus like the snippets that I get during the week of festival and deciphering the differences between Sault Ste. Marie and the other cities in Northern Ontario, like North Bay and Sudbury that I know a lot better. So it's been really nice building those Bridges like finding the similarities, but then also seeing the subtle differences and in, in how to approach things. Um, I'd love to end off with sharing one thing that everyone's excited about most this season. Um, I can go first for this one and say that I am very excited for all of the different spaces that we're going to have to offer. It's going to be the first year in a while that we've spread outside of just the museum. The museum is still our home base. It's still where our office is. It's still, you know, that's like our kind of central location, but we've got some great other spaces this year. And I'm really excited to see how things work in there um, and just like watch as the festivals growing and spreading out into community a little bit more. Um, I'll pass it over to, uh, to Mark what uh what are you most excited about this season uh, i just i think the i've been a part of uh quite a few different organizations and, and community groups and stuff but i i just think uh my from my experience uh fringe north is definitely a, a very interesting one and i'm kind of looking forward to the um you know, all the stuff that we've been doing over the last few months to prepare for this and kind of seeing it actually uh, kind of flourish with the team. I think that that's some, definitely something I'm looking forward to. Uh, we have a lot of different uh, talents and uh, things that everyone's offering in our season this year. So I'm, it's, I think it's everything coming together, I think is uh, what I'm looking forward to. Great. Right. What about for you, Avery? I think I'm really excited just for the everything that's going to be offered between the performances and the vendors and the visual arts and just getting to see everything. Yeah, I'll pass it to Emily. Thanks, Avery. Um, so I've mentioned it before. Unfortunately, I won't be here for the festival, um, which I'm getting more and more like sad about because I'm getting to hear more about what like what the artists are up to and getting to you know talk about their performances with them and all that stuff and so um I'm ex really excited to hear about how it goes um and just to hear about the growth um compared to previous years um uh, I I've never been to Fringe so it's like it's Fringe North it's gonna be you know and I guess I won't, <laughs> I won't be going either, but like hopefully next summer. Um, yeah, but I'm excited to hear how it goes and uh, just hear, yeah, it'll be, I think it'll be great. Everyone, everyone's on top of their, their stuff. So um, yeah, I'll pass it over to Caitlin. Yeah, I think um, there's a part of me, if I'm being really transparent, when we get to like this type of time of the season, I'm just like somewhat looking forward for the festival to be done because it just gets to be like <laughs> a lot of like, there's a lot to do. Um, so there is, if I'm honest, that part of me. Um, and then what I'm most looking forward to is like actually being at festival because it does, for me in my role, I kind of get to relax like a little bit during festival too, because again, it is mostly oversight of the team and helping support the team do the various things on site. So I do get to just kind of soak it in a little bit more than other team members do because I'm there for like when an emergency happens or like those kinds of things. Uh, which makes it a little bit unique so I get to enjoy performances I mean the whole team does as much as we can offer it but 
um, a little bit more than other team members. And so I really enjoy uh, that element. And then um, also the fact that I am an artist for the first time this year. So I'm both terrified and excited for that element too. Amazing. Well, thank you so much, all of you, for uh, coming on today and uh, sharing a little bit about what it takes to make this festival happen and giving our audience a little bit of an insight into all of the amazing people. And this is only a, a snippet of our seasonal team. We have um, several other individuals who are all part of making this festival great. So thank you. Uh, Mark, Avery, Emily, for coming on and highlighting the seasonal team. Um, it's it's really been amazing to work with all of you and the entire seasonal team. Uh, been doing such great work and couldn't do it without you. Especially, you know how the festival has grown. It's like very nice to have all of this uh, these really strong team members because it would be very challenging if uh, we didn't for sure and then thank you for you Caitlin coming on as well um, sharing a little bit about uh, your side of things and yeah it's been great uh, does anyone else have anything to add before we wrap up usually give artists a space to like plug their shows but uh it's a little bit different. Like all the shows, August 21st, 25th, French Door. Yeah, if I can jump in, I yeah. think it's really important for those watching, like the festival would not be able to grow without our seasonal team. And it really is important. And we do rely on, on donations and finances from local community partners in order to be able to bring on these amazing team members and keep them on for the whole summer. And um, yeah, we really... Um, do think our various partnerships for that and Canada Summer Jobs too, um, Experience Ontario. Um, there's a lot of different grants that provide the way that I the way that I think people don't understand unless you're in the industry. Um, when you get grants for people, typically they cover a portion. So uh, these grants are really fantastic, and we really appreciate working with Canada Summer Jobs, Experience Ontario which are the two that we're working with this year but it really is because of donations from partnerships that we are able to uh, keep people on throughout the rest of the summer and once those grants come to an end um, and so it's really important and we really do value every donation made um, and yeah thank you for those who financially support and create these jobs for the community yeah absolutely well, thank you so much, uh, all of you, once again. And uh, thank you, everyone, for tuning in, joining us tonight. Merci, miigwech, gracias. And uh, just a, a reminder that the Friends 2024 is coming up real soon, August 21st to the 25th. You can check out our website, all of our social media channels, and description below for more information about the Friends of the And as Caitlin said, if you want to support uh, all of the work that the team is doing here, here uh, make sure, sure that this festival keeps happening in your year. Please consider tipping the French. Um, your support helps us, uh, like I said, exist and keep happening and uh, keep doing this work and, and growing in community. So really appreciate any support that anyone can provide. Tune in next Thursday evening, and we will be back with another live stream. We can't wait to see you then. Thanks so much again. Have a great night.